Hi, welcome to my channel. If you're watching this video, more than likely you were searching YouTube for how to build a Bluetooth ammo can speaker box. In the last few months, I've built a few of these for friends as gifts and sold one. And I thought I would show you how I build mine and a few of the lessons I've learned from building them. First off, you'll start with an ammo can. This is a new ammo can that I purchased from Amazon, but you can also use actual military issue ammo can. Uh, Amazon is going to have these listed as a 50 cal ammo can, and like I said, I'll have a description or a link in the description where to find that on Amazon. You can also find these ammo cans, I've seen them at Walmart, uh, Harbor Freight, some of your flea markets may have them, uh, but more than likely if you're at a flea market or army surplus, you'll find the actual military style army ammo can. This one is a 5.56 M16 uh, ammunition can. These open up like that. Other parts that you're going to need are of course a pair of four inch speakers. These are typical automotive door speakers you find in your car. Uh, another thing is you've got the option to use the grills that came with them. I use these computer fan covers. They have to be modified a little bit. You have to bend these legs back uh, because they're a little big. If you can see here, they're, they go outside the holes that the speakers mount to. What I like to do is bend these legs down and then bend them back. They'll sit off the speaker and these holes will line up with your mounting holes on the speaker. One thing to remember though, if you do use these, you're going to have to move your speakers up higher from the bottom because these take up a lot more room than these do once they're modified. Uh, you'll need a battery. This is a battery that I bought off Amazon. It is used for like home security systems for a power backup or an uninterrupted power supply backup for your computer. A control panel. This is simply an on off switch, a USB charging port, a voltmeter, and a 12 volt outlet. You can plug a cigarette lighter type plug such as this in there and power something else. What I'm going to use this for is to charge it. I'll take this little $10 charger that I got off Amazon. I will cut the clips off and connect this to it. And all I have to do is just pop that cap, plug it in, and it charges. This particular one I think was about $10. Any of the 12 volt uh, battery tender type chargers will work. As I said, this is a uh, amplifier and Bluetooth receiver. It has an on-off switch, an auxiliary plug-in, a USB sound that you can plug in, and then of course these are what you'll connect your speakers to. You can use banana clips to plug them in, or these unscrew, and there's a slot, put your speaker wire through there, and clamp down. These also, on Amazon, they come in two different uh, formats, I guess you'd say. One is just the amplifier Bluetooth receiver itself, the other has a power supply for it. Now, you've got your DC 12, well, up to 24 volt in, but it will work off uh, 12 volt. If you get one without the power supply, now it plugs into your 110 or your home outlet, takes it from 120 volts, 110 volts, down to 12, 24 with a transformer. You don't need that because you're running it off the battery, but if you don't get that, you're going to have to make a plug to go in there and to connect to your control panel. So when you turn it on, so you can either go and get the special, and I don't know what size it is off the top of my head, plug that goes in there or order it with the power supply and simply cut that cord off, throw the rest of the, the transformer away and use that connected to your wiring harness inside here. Other things you're going to need, you'll notice all the silver inside. This is sound dampening mat. It is like a rubber rise material with a silver foil on it. It peels back and sticks to the inside. I just noticed on this one that I didn't put a liner on the top. It's a good idea to line the top, but these metal cans, they'll, they will rattle a little bit. You know, most speaker boxes are made out of uh, 
particle board wood, so they're a little more solid. And that's another thing about this layout. You don't have to use an ammo can. You can build a wooden box. You can take an old timey antique radio and gut it, put speakers in it and have a modern sound with the old look. Any container that you can think of, you can turn into a speaker box. I just have to be using the old ammo cans. But it is important that you line it if it's a thin material, such as these cans, that you notice the sound difference. Because this one has got the uh, sound dampening material in it. Uh, other things you'll need, like I said, you can clip the, pop the top on the box and clip these to the batteries and charge that away. Just thought I'd make it a little easier and use the cigarette lighter plug just to plug from the outside. Uh, small parts you're going to need other than the obvious the wiring for it are these butt connectors and uh, the female slide blade connectors. I call them slide connects. I called them blade connectors before. One thing is you'll need two different sizes. Say you're using a 12 gauge wire, you need to get a 14 to 16 gauge connector in both sizes because there's going to be a lot of times where you're going to take two wires and go to one and you'll need to connect those and you're not going to get two 12 gauge wires into a single 12 gauge connector. You need to go up the next size so if there's room to twist the wires together and insert them. We'll go over that later when we're making the wiring harnesses for it. But that's it for the parts. Uh, let's get to the first step. All right, the first step to building your Bluetooth ammo can speaker box is laying out the locations for the holes for your speaker, the hole for the uh, port, and the control panel. Now, the control panel, these pieces come out of it. Each individual socket unscrews. So, you'll, what I do is you've got the side that opens up, and then you've got a blank side. I will take all these pieces out, except for the actual plastic face, lay it on there and draw my circle so I'll know where to drill holes at. For the rest of it, I will take some of this, mask, this blue painter's masking tape and cover the ammo can with this. And I won't bore you with watching me cover the entire thing with tape. We'll get back to this once I finish taping it up. Okay, I've got the ammo box taped up. Another thing about taping it up is if you're using a new box and you don't want it to get scarred up during the build process, this kind of protects the paint. I'm not worried about this one that much because it's kind of scuffed already. Uh, you might notice the top is a little mismatched for its color. It has some rust here. I sanded off the rust, shot it with some OD green paint to touch it up. but. Other than that, I'm not worried about it getting scratched up. I want it to look used. So I mask it up, mask it off. I've decided where I want the speakers to be. And this is about center for one of the speakers. I have marked it with uh, some little crosshairs using my Sharpie. And now I will take a compass. Now this is a drafting type compass. You can find one at Walmart or Staples or Office Max, anywhere like that. Cheap kids type plastic compass does just as good. I measured the outside diameter here of the speaker. And that's the size hole I want in there. So, and it's exactly four inches. So I'm gonna take my compass and uh, I'd still set pretty much from the last time at two inches. So I will take my compass, put it on the crosshairs, and draw my circle. Now this is a really hard lead because it's meant for drafting. It's old school drafting on the paper. So it doesn't want to show up that well. I'll go back over it with a pen and I'll black out that line so that I can see it when I'm cutting my holes. And 
And you're probably asking, how do I cut these holes? Because they're too big for a drill. That will be our next part of the build. And what I use is a regular jigsaw, like you would use for woodworking. And they sell a metal cutting jigsaw blade. Uh, DeWalt sells them. The brand I use is DeWalt. Uh, you can find them at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, Harbor Freight, I saw them the other day, they had some metal cutting um, saw blades for the jigsaw. The next will be for the port. And I mentioned the port earlier, but I didn't mention what I use. This is a tube that comes out of a golf bag. Your individual golf clubs will go down these to keep the shafts from banging into each other. You can get these at a sporting goods store. I've seen them, I think this one was $2. I've seen them as high as $4.50 and $5 but it's uh, just under an inch and a half. You'll cut it off about that long, say two to three inches long, however you want it, and uh, simply drill a hole there. And we will drill that hole and place it in there. Use a little hot glue or you can use epoxy to hold it in and make sure it doesn't come out. So let's go to the control panel layout. All right, we've removed the com individual components from the control panel, and now we'll take it it doesn't have to be perfectly centered. I'm not going to bother with measuring it, but uh, I'm going up against the bottom edge of the hinge attachment. Take my Sharpie. Okay, there are four mounting screws that hold this in. And I'm not gonna mark them yet, because as I drill these out, they may be off just a hair. I may need to slide left, slide right, depending on how well I manage the drill. So what I will do is, once I get these drilled and in place, and the actual components are holding the panel down, the face plate down, then I'll come back with my drill and just drill in each hole. One thing uh, to mention is you're saying, well, I don't have a bit that big. What I'm gonna use is a step drill. You'll see it in a few minutes. It's kind of a cone-shaped drill bit. Drills multiple size holes. You should, hi. Yeah, you're loud. Okay, so I will drill these holes out. If you're trying not to spend a lot of money, you're like, I don't need to spend money on a step drill, because I've already got all this other stuff I've had to buy. You could just mark this out, drill it with a normal drill bit, and then cut it out with jigsaw. Boy, I've got a lot of company today. Needy. So, you'll see how I do this here in just a few minutes. So, now it's the next step. Let's go out, get on the workbench, and get to cutting.
All right, we've got the holes cut out for the speakers. Didn't turn out too bad, I don't think. Probably do a little cleanup with the file or the Dremel tool. Now I'm gonna use the step drill that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it goes up to an inch and five eighths. We're not gonna go quite that big. This will be for the port. All right, didn't have the drill tight enough. Let's see if our port will fit now. A little bit more. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna, like I did the last time, I'm going to start this with a center drill. That one's big enough.
as I mentioned earlier, if you use these uh, computer cooling fan grill covers, these legs have to be bent. So that's what we're going to do now. Now, I made the mistake of trying to bend these without heat, and I would get about one bend, and if I went to adjust it more, then I just broke them off. So I found out the hard way, you've got to heat them. And just repeat this for both sides. You can uh, use the actual speaker or the speaker grill that came with it to measure and make sure your holes are the right distance apart. It's a little tricky getting the screws in. Uh, I go buy some uh, extra machine screws from Lowe's or Home Depot, something like that. And I don't use the more coarse screws that come with the speakers. Okay, not sure how well you can see that. But uh, I've got my holes in the legs of the speaker grills matching up with the original factory plastic grill. So now just to do one more. Yeah, I did mess up the paint. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just take a wire brush and knock that ash off and shoot it with another coat of black paint. It'll be good as new. All right, I've been working on the wiring harness and rather than have you watch me do every step, I thought I would uh, get it complete and then show you the layout. But I did want to show you a couple of things, how I branch from one wire to two. And I will take the wire, twist, put this butt connector on. crimpers give a little tug to make sure it's on there and then go to my single crimp that 
All right, I've got one to two for my split. And just to clean things up, I'm putting a little heat shrink on here. If you don't have a heat gun, a uh, hair dryer will do it. It just takes a little longer. This heat gun gets really hot. Uh, some people do it with a cigarette lighter. You can do it with a soldering iron. Stuff's pretty sensitive to heat. And that will snug it up. It gives you a nice, uh, clean splice. And uh, I'll get back with you in just a minute and show you all the finished wiring harnesses. All right, this is the negative side of the wiring harness. You'll see I come from the battery and I've connected uh, just randomly to the 12 volt cigarette lighter type charger, then jump from its negative side to the negative side of the USB charger. And then from that negative, I go to the negative side of the switch and from there I go to the voltmeter. And from there I've got one more pigtail and that will lead to our amplifier, which we'll get to in just a minute. Now for the other wiring harness. All right, the next is our power distribution harness, as I call it. This will go from your 12 volt battery charger, or cigarette lighter plug that I'm using for the charger port it goes to the battery and from the battery we've got power that runs to the switch now there are one negative and two positive outputs on the back of the switch when you come from the battery make sure you go to the center post and then from there we'll go out with the power that will go to the rest of the outlets now for the final wiring harness we go from the outside post with a power and these just jump in series. Uh, tell you what, I'll plug them all in, let you see how I do this. So as I said before, we've got the power coming from the battery to the switch, the center post of the switch. Now we'll plug in there. We will go to the USB charger and we will go to the voltmeter. This is going to leave us two plugs, one positive, one negative, and these will go to our amplifier. Now, if we flip the switch, we're showing 12.8 12 12 volts. So next step, Let's get the wiring harness for the amplifier and then we'll be ready to put this thing together. Okay, as you see, speakers are in, but they're simply being held in by the sound dampening mat. I wanted the speakers to fit as closely to the can as possible. And if I'd had to put them on the back side of the matting, it would have had them setting back in a little bit. So what I wanted to get was a flush fit. Uh, the hole for the port is cut out. The holes for the control panel are cut out. Now it's just a matter of installing everything. All right, this is the original speaker box that I showed you earlier. Notice the fan grills and their orientation. I went a little different route with the new speaker box. If you'll notice, that, to me, they kind of look like the gun sights in an old bomber. Even the hash marks between the rings. Thought it looked pretty good. So now I'm going to cut the port tube, insert it, and then we'll start putting everything inside. All 
why it's getting there. I use this uh, 3M dual lock tape. It's somewhat like Velcro, but it's not hook and loop. Both sides are identical and it holds pretty tight. So what I'm going to do is put this on the bottom of the battery to keep it from moving around inside the speaker box. All right, uh, control panel pieces are in, speaker wires are in. All right, let's get the amp installed. To mount the amplifier, I use some of this heavy duty uh, Scotch brand double sided tape. All right, and this is the finished product. I've personalized it with uh, my Army Engineer decal, Freedom decal. I'm going to see what else I can find to put on here. I uh, also did a paracord, 550 cord braid on the handle. These handles, sometimes if you get the volume cranked up, they'll it'll rattle some. Got the screws put in the panel. I also added uh, these felt feet pads on the bottom. Well, if you're sitting it on a surface like a glass table or wooden furniture or something, you won't have to worry about scratching it up. Uh, something else I. Here's the charger. Velcro right in the lid. I also a double back uh, Velcro and made it so that I could uh, bundle up my cords so they weren't hanging down there in the rest of the wiring. And uh, of course, that's what it looks like on the inside now. But. Uh, It. Just don't turn the cigarette lighter plug, put that in there, plug your charger in, and you're good to go. Let's uh, test it out. Turn the switch on, let it boot up. Bluetooth mode. I'm connecting it to my iPad and you'll see F900S connected. F900S is this particular uh, Bluetooth receiver. Every one I've ever used has that same title. So let's find some music on the iPad. Here we go. I'm the realest, realest. Drop this and let the whole world feel it. And that's all it is to it. Uh, th thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please put them down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video and we'll see what else I come up with. Thanks and have a great day.